Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are safe and sound. In this week's lecture, I am going to talk about three different and interesting sensors. Therefore, the whole lecture is divided into three portions and there will be a video for each portion separately. In this video, I'll talk about gyroscopes, whereas in the next one, I'll talk about moisture sensors and in the last one, we'll see that how a pH sensor works. So, without any further delay, let's see that what a gyroscope is and how it works and how we can use it in practical situations. First of all, a gyroscope is a type of rotational displacement sensor. Like all rotational displacement sensors, gyroscope is also going to measure something related to rotation. If you can remember a bit that how an incremental shaft encoder works, you must have an idea that incremental shaft encoders cannot measure absolute angular rotation. Therefore, to cover that, we have an absolute shaft encoder. But they are quite difficult to make and hence are quite expensive. Gyroscopes, on the other hand, can also measure absolute angular displacement and hence are normally used with incremental shaft encoders to measure the absolute angular rotation. Now, in practice, there are two types of gyroscopes. The first one that I am going to talk about are called the mechanical gyroscopes and are the main reason from where this whole concept was developed. You must have seen a top, which is also called a gyro which if rotated with enough angular speed will maintain its axis of rotation. Furthermore, you must have an idea of what momentum is. According to the Newton's first law of motion, a body will tend to maintain its state unless acted upon by some external force. This means that if something is at rest, it will try to remain at rest unless acted upon by some force from the outside. Or if something is moving, it would want to remain in that state unless acted upon by some external force that tries to stop it. The idea of momentum is quite common and you must have seen a number of examples in your daily life where because of momentum certain things are happening. The simplest example is when you roll a ball on a level ground and as per Newton's first law of motion, the ball should never come to rest because it would want to remain in the rolling state forever. But the external forces that are the air drag and the frictional forces between the ball and the ground, they try to stop that ball and eventually the ball stops after rolling a bit. You can easily appreciate that if you roll a ball on a very plain smooth surface, the ball will roll quite a longer distance as compared to if you roll a ball on the grass. Because on the grass, the frictional forces are much more greater than the frictional forces present on a plain smooth surface. Moreover, if you have ever driven a car, you can recall that if you stop pressing the accelerator or brake, the car will keep on rolling and will eventually slow down because of the friction between the tires and the road. And if somehow you can reduce this friction, that is the external force, the car will keep on rolling and keep on traveling in the forward direction. Furthermore, all the things that are stationary will remain stationary unless you apply some force to lift them or to move them to a certain location. And the magnitude of the force that is required to move something or to stop something depends on the momentum of that object. Having said that, if something is moving in a straight line, it will have a momentum that will try to keep that object moving in a straight line. But what if something is rotating? Then of course there will be a momentum that will cause that object or at least try to keep that object in continuous rotation. This momentum is particularly called angular momentum. The angular momentum is quite special and is a bit different than simple linear momentum in a form that the angular momentum depends not only just the weight or other physical properties of the object, but also on the direction of the axis of rotation. So the angular momentum will not just try to maintain the rotation of the object, but will also try to maintain the axis of rotation. Now this is the concept behind the gyroscopes. Suppose that a rotating wheel is attached to a frame, which is in turn attached with a certain object. Now if the wheel is rotating, the shaft holding the wheel will become the axis of rotation 
and the angular momentum of the wheel will try to maintain the position of this axis of rotation. Now, if the frame which is attached to the body rotates, the angular momentum of the wheel will resist this rotation and hence will not allow the wheel to rotate with the frame. The frame is attached with the object. So if the object is rotating, the frame will rotate, but the angular momentum will not allow the wheel to change its rotational axis. At this point, the difference of angle between the frame and the axis of rotating wheel will give us the amount of angular rotation the object has made. The animation on this slide shows how the axis of a spinning wheel is maintained by the angular momentum and how the frames attached to it can rotate in different directions. The shown animation is of a three axis gyroscope that measures angular rotation in all three axes. Normally, these kind of gyroscopes are installed on airplanes and on ships where the frame is attached with the body of the airplane or the ship and the spinning wheel axis maintain its position. And if the ship or the airplane takes a turn or rotate about a certain axis, the frame attached to that axis rotates with the plane and hence how much rotation has occurred is shown by the difference between the axis of rotation of the wheel and the frame. You might have heard that gyroscopes are available in small chips as well. Now you must be confused whether there is a spinning wheel somewhere in that chip and frames just like the one which were in me mechanical gyroscopes. Well, there is nothing like that in MEMS gyroscopes. These gyroscopes are working on a totally different concept and that is the concept of Coriolis force. If you have viewed my video on mass flow rate sensors, I talked about Coriolis flow meters over there and explained a bit that what is Coriolis force. Let me revise that thing over here once again, that what is Coriolis force and how it is generated and let us link it to the gyroscopes. Coriolis force is something that is responsible for the tornadoes and the spiral movement of clouds all around our earth. To understand this thing and to know what Coriolis force is, consider this animation. Over here, two different perspectives are shown. In the top perspective, you are a third person viewing a rotating disc from a distance and the ball present at the center tries to move in a straight line towards the red dot at the outer periphery of this rotating disc. Now, as the ball starts moving and the disc is rotated, the ball will maintain its direction of motion and will move in a straight line. When the ball reaches the outer periphery, the red dot has moved away from the point. Now consider that if you are standing on the red dot or you are the red dot and are standing on a rotating disc and someone present at the center of that rotating disc throws a black ball towards you, what you are going to see. As the disc will rotate, you will move away from the ball, but the trajectory that the ball will take as per your perspective will be a circular one. Now, how that happened? Initially, the black ball started traveling towards you, but as you moved away because you were standing on the rotating disc, the black ball was moving in a straight line, kept moving in that straight line, and hence approached the outer periphery after you have moved away from your initial position. Some of you might have been naughty in their childhood and must have thrown something out of the moving car. At that time, you must have seen that when you threw something out of the car, you expected it to go in a straight line. But that thing moved in a curve. And why was that? It was because you were sitting in the car and the object that you threw went in a circle. If someone was viewing your car from the sky, he must have seen the object move in a straight line as you threw it and your car moving in a particular direction, which is something that you were expecting to see. Now, this circular motion is only visible if you are present on the moving object. And this is the reason that we see clouds move in circles because we are standing on the rotating sphere that is the Earth. Moreover, the force that made things go in circle or in a curve is called Coriolis force. So over here you can see that if an object is moving in a particular direction and you throw it in a perpendicular direction which is represented by Z, then a Coriolis force will rotate that object 
about the third axis that is y. Conversely, if something is moving in a straight direction and you rotate it about a perpendicular axis, then the Coriolis force will try to move that object in the z direction. This is the concept behind the state-of-the-art MEMS gyroscopes. In such gyroscopes, there are two vibrating masses which are vibrating in x direction. And if they experience a rotation, Coriolis force will move them in perpendicular direction. This movement in the perpendicular direction is normally measured using accelerometers that can be of any type. In this image shown over here, two accelerometers of capacitor type are shown, which have one fixed plate and the other plate vibrating in x-axis. As the plate experience any rotation, a Coriolis force will try to move that plate in the perpendicular direction, hence increasing or decreasing its distance from the fixed plate, which will in turn increase or decrease the capacitance of the capacitor. This change in capacitance will then give a measure of Coriolis force, which in turn is proportional to the rate of rotation. So this is how state-of-the-art MEMS gyroscopes are working. You can get a simple IC easily from the market that will have this kind of gyroscope embedded into it, and they can give you the rate of rotation of the body on which they have been mounted. So I hope that you have understood that how gyroscopes work and what are the concepts behind the working of these fascinating devices. This is all for this video. Thank you and take care.